Rapidly increasing consumption of energy materials and services simultaneously increases the demand for natural resources and the rate of their utilization. This consumption drives environmental change locally and globally and requires greater sustainable practices when involving finite resources. Food production is a major contributor to environmental impacts in developed countries due to its high demand for natural resources, space, and energy. The move from unsustainable food collection methods began in the mid-1900s, where the use of aquaculture increased exponentially with the introduction of exclusive economic zones and quota management systems. With the total contribution of human consumed aquatic products growing from 50% in 2018 from a mere 5% in 1970. Here, we will display the past, present, and future methods of food collection and how all played important roles for how we consume and collect food from the ocean today. Before European colonization and the start of the Industrial Revolution, indigenous communities relied on basic equipment, which was readily available in the natural environment. Here in Albany, the local Manang Noongar tribe used the tidal fluctuation of the ocean with the addition of large iron rocks to create fish traps which captured species such as whiting, herring and snapper in shallow waters once the tide turned. The introduction of modernised fishing equipment and specialised vessels led to the exponential increase in the amount of food able to be taken from the ocean. However, this was not always used appropriately. Whaling in Albany was one of the first commercial industries in Western Australia. At peak, it provided 60% of the world's market for sperm whale products. Innovative technologies rapidly exploited the ocean, leaving whale up populations at risk. Whale oil was used for lubricants, explosives, soap, and lamp oil. Whaling started to be regulated in 1946 and quotas were introduced to protect certain species. By 1986, all commercial whaling was banned, with the protection of these species the top priority for the world. Since the overfishing of whales and many other marine species, technology has progressed to where more sustainable practices are now a key factor for fisheries and other food collection methods. The introduction of aquaculture has allowed for the replenishment of wild aquatic life populations, allowing for the recovery of near extinction for some. However, with the growing idea that aquaculture is more sustainable, this has also increased the byproduct of fishing gear, such as rope and plastics, to enter the ocean. Lost fishing lines and broken gear due to weather and poor management have proven detrimental for the environment and marine life. They cause entanglement for larger marine mammals and can be broken down into microplastics which marine fish are now ingesting in some parts of the world. This is a huge concern for current food collection methods and is an ongoing battle to achieve greater sustainability. The increased integration of sustainable energy use, multi-trophic aquaculture systems and indigenous partnership will increase the environmental protection of marine species and their habitats as well as having the knowledge to mitigate possible detrimental byproducts that come with the increasing popularity of marine food. By engaging stakeholders and First Nations people, future planning will bridge the knowledge gap and ensure traditional knowledge is incorporated for sustainability practices, which is essential to preserve the future of marine resources. Mm -hmm.